just joining to our Continental Bar and Lounge. I'm hanging out with the awardees at Ash Carla's launch party, which I already labeled with that. But again, I feel it's so important, wow, better uh, to talk about these things, right? Well, be uh, transparent. So first, why don't we tell them a little about yourself? This is my businessman, the entrepreneur, um, and Ash actually wore him today with the Leadership and Business Award. Um, and tell me a little bit about yourself, Rob, as if we were meeting right now. Uh, anyways. Um, well, I was born and raised here. Thank you, Robin. Awesome. Awesome. I was born and raised here in Silicon Valley. My parents are migrant workers. Okay. Um, and my dad was an educator for 34 years. So nice. education wasn't where are you going to call it. No, if you're going to go to college, but where are you going to go to college? Right, right, right. And my dad saw education. Story of my life with Indians. <laughs> where are you going to go to college? Yeah. <laughs> Education was a way out for us to have a better life. Right. And going to San Jose State, graduating from San Jose State with my bachelor's in communication studies, and okay. uh, done many things. I was a flight attendant for four years. Okay. And ran two large uh, commercial real estate trade associations, but business in the same field. In the same field. Yeah, we're gonna have to talk about that. But it's so important. You know, the flight attendants thing. That was the base, right? That's the that's the key of your experience with that. And then. Uh, continued on how did, how did real, real estate end up working out you know real estate was great and um, but business was really where I wanted to be and I always used the Silicon Valley Business Journal as a resource for anything I did and now I'm working there and three years later oh, really? three, three years next month okay um, we we been doing the business of pride for the last three years. Awesome, awesome. And it all so, started. So you for the Silicon Valley Business Journal. Are you writing for them as well, those type of things? or No, I was actually the audience development director. Okay. So I was in charge. So you went from real estate to media. Yes. <laughs> sounds, like a, sounds like a smart guy. Yes. Uh, but um, so wonderful. So anybody wants to check that out. Um, tell me how that works. I cut you off. You're saying you were director of audience. I was director of audience development, so I was responsible for increasing our presence out in the community and um, driving subscriptions. But really, what really drove me is we needed to be more out in the Latino community, the, the Indian community, the Asian community. Yes, yes, me. Yes. So, so let me guess. You're studying not just studying demographics, but you had the harder job of creating new demographics. Correct. Right. Um, but quickly, on a, on a, on a tangent, I mean, the hardest thing for you guys probably is from old school papers to new school digital. Yes. I'm sure this would be great value for anybody who's listening. What has what that transition been like? It's been a difficult transition. Right? I it's, mean, many people have lost their jobs when we went from print to digital. So, um, But we're ahead of the game at the Business Journal, which is so great. So uh, we actually just uh, teamed up with What Up Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. So we're actually podcasting now from our website. Nice. Yes. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Yes, right? And I'm sure people who are wondering that from traditional to, I feel like we're at that point where we don't even notice now, but it's like going from the horse to the car, right? And at the end of the day, these screens that people are watching, I swear we can hold 20 seminars or we can just do this and that's why you know, you're probably the co coolest about it because uh, it's going to reach so many more people so much quicker and the, the fact things are more free what's going to keep people going back to silicon this is all we have to give 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 value right and make right. them feel that and even if that means for free i i feel that the thank you economy people will disappear. You know, um, I think the thing with business, and, and if you look around here in the area, we're the only publication that's always talking about local business breaking news. And um, so digital or print, it really doesn't matter for us. Nobody's covering what we cover right, right now in Silicon Valley. So we're, we're at Ash's event, right? We're talking, and I feel it's so important to talk about uh, these type of issues. Um, so, what I, first thing I wanted to, to ask is, so Saturday we got Pride, I recommend everybody come out uh, and do. support, um, I think that's the most important thing and it's even more important if you're a straight man like me that you come out, support, um, show that hey, we're all one, we're all equal and I, I feel like that was, Allies are always welcome yes. at Pride. <laughs> <laughs> Every, the whole goes, everyone is welcome at yes. Pride and I mean, we're no San Francisco yet. But that's the goal is we got to start somewhere, right? Yes, we do. we got to build it up and we got to do things like this to spread uh, the word. And, and that's one thing I want to talk about with kind of open-ended question, but what does pride uh, mean to you? I'm talking out of my face, like, if I'm assuming, but you, this means much more uh, to, to someone like yourself. What, what does pride mean uh, to you? 
you know, pride for me means that I can express myself and be myself in, in anywhere now in Silicon Valley. And business has embraced it where I work. Um, so it's a time where I can celebrate and just be thankful that I have the rights. Thank goodness we live here in California, which is so much more liberal and so much more um, uh, embracing of the LGBT community. Yep. And and I'm just thrilled to be here. You can be yourself. Right? To be right? myself. I'd like to not have anything hanging over your head. Uh, we were just listening to uh, Wiggy got the uh, Legacy Award, yes. and you know uh, I was talking to her, but Ash was talking. To about a story of you know even workplace discrimination. Yes. Uh, I have zero knowledge. You could catch me up. Did you hear anything? On uh, I know she went through um, something in the past and kind of you know fought for her rights after that, which I'm sure paved the way for many others. Well, you know something that happened two years ago um, in Charlotte was the the bathroom bill. Uh, I'm sure we all heard about that, where um, the state legislature unfortunately blocked that and they didn't want to give transgender people access to use whatever bathroom they wanted to. And in our, we had a national meeting, and in that meeting, our president of American City Business Journal spoke to us and said, we do not discriminate on the basis of transgender sexual orientation. And it made me feel that, wow, I can be myself here. In this community, I don't have to fear. I go to Vancouver and other places, and it's just they don't even have any sign. It's just open, right? Right. And the fact that I, you know, as an American, found it weird uh, at first should be a little concerning. I'm like, wait, no mail. Uh, but but in March this year, it just became uh, a law that simply has to be unisex, it, it just be one. Correct. Right? Here um, in California. Here's an idea. How about you just don't put any sign on there? Just say it's the bathroom, right? What is what? What is there? I mean, we're signifying gender identity there. Right? Why are we doing um, that? So yeah, these sound like little things, but these little things pave the way. And even you look at the ADA, American Disabilities Act, everybody's like, oh, why is this a big deal? You're going around, you're making me remodel. Um, be a person who actually is already late to work, has to get out of their wheelchair and crawl up stairs, right? right? And then it hits you. What happened there? You got educated, and and you, that kind of slapped you around. Says, okay, well, I'm being a little selfish. I'm not thinking of others. That sounds completely realistic. So to change minds, I think we got to do that. we got to do things like this, especially for, for the youth, you know, yes. coming up. There's a transition. Uh, so we talked about what, what, what pride meant to you. So this one's a, kind of a touchy one okay. for my f fellow uh, Indians out there. So looking back for, for somebody, you know, who's probably listening right now, but it's kind of trapped within themselves. You know, you know what I'm talking about as far as coming out, right? right? What advice would you give to some youth because, uh, you know, you have the experience to be looking backwards, some people can't, and even if one person hears this, that this will go miles. I know especially if you're Indian or you're in the Asian, the context of culture, any culture. Or Latino. Uh, Latino, yeah. Who am I to say just, just limited Asian? If you're a first generation immigrant, then it gets tougher. What? What advice, it's a loaded question, would you give to Adrian? <laughs> you know, back? being a Mexican American myself, um, so I'm actually a double minority, yeah, being Mexican nice. and being Latino. Okay. Um, don't, don't be afraid, come out. There are resources out there for you. There's leaders out there in the community who are here to help you. It's okay to come out, you don't have to worry. There are safe places like the Billy DeFrank LGBTQ Center you can go to. You know, there's other resources. Um, us as business leaders, you know, who are out and proud, don't be afraid, we can help you out. And guess what? You're normal. I don't care what anybody says to you, and I, right? And I was speaking on right. that, and I was reading up on my history um, because the history is ridiculous. We're talking about during the times of Alexander the Great, going back to 3 BC and Zimbabwe, of, Cone star, I, mean, there's, I, was, I was reading up on it to just say, okay, well, this is cut and clear, so what, what makes us later, you know, think that we're not almost obviously the environment, brand, those type of things, but that's, that's the question I want to ask Rob, because we're limited to only hanging out in our neighborhood, um, right, I can't uh, literally imagine, uh, I just kind of wait on your chest, right, what it feels like, to not just be yourself, everybody has that right, who deserves that right, and that's exactly what I'm doing. Right. Yeah. You know, I was raised Catholic, and um, so we yeah. all know how. That's <laughs> my next question. Keep going, keep going. I was raised Catholic, and um, uh, my mom went to Catholic schools. And um, when I came out, you know, there was no issue, and and there's many 
things wrong with with religion out there but i think religion's turning around and realizing that you know now to get a little religious god doesn't make anything that's not perfect and we're all made in his image and there's nothing wrong with us being gay that's how we were made and and that's who we are I'm so glad i got it. you brought to go first you're uh, <laughs> uh killing us i love it <laughs> thank, no, you. thank you absolutely um We'll come back to the, the, the religion part, and that was 10th millennium, millennium BC for the Zimbabwe uh, stone carvings I was talking about. Um, I just want to talk about Harvey Milk for um, a second. What do you mean to you? My uh, wife and I got our pictures done at City Hall. I remember seeing a uh, carving of him, but to me, Harvey Milk, MLK, JFK, they're all the same. And anybody who paves the way for others and um, is selfless in that way is a hero to me, which I meant every word I said and I sent you that uh, message. But just for you personally, you know, what, what does he what's talking about to me and everything to you? Um, what does? What does Harvey Milk mean uh, to you? And you're, you're familiar. Oh, okay, yes, I okay. am. Okay. So make yes. Sure. <laughs> be like, I'm not that uh, old. Okay. But. <laughs> Um, you know, Harvey Milk um, really paved the way for, for many to um, be able to come out and, and embrace who you are and, and, and be part of your community. And he ran for office and unfortunately, you know, he was shot with uh, uh, Moscone at that time and um, people weren't ready, but he started that movement. He really showed that, you know, you need to come out, you need to be involved in your community, and, and it's okay. And I think that's what, besides Stonewall in New York, that, that's another uh, piece of our history, right. especially here in, in the Bay Area. I'm sure there's so many other Harvey Mills out there that never got their story told. Yes. And essentially, you're, you're being one right now. Right. But the point is community leaders, right? Being a community leader. Um, and this is my show, so I can cuss. Not giving a pass to what anybody thinks because, uh, you know, you to be you. I know there's like many people like you, and uh, unfortunately, sometimes you, you have to organize, right? You have to step up, uh, and I think that's what's really commendable, what Harvey did. It's tragic that he had to become a martyr, right, in order to get that point um, across, but, but maybe that's what was written for him, right? Um, we don't wish that upon anybody, but um, yeah, that, that is just one thing. That's why I want to bring up, you know, Harvey uh, uh, to, to, to everybody. So back to that part, we talked about religion, we talked about this and that. What do you think it is that makes people today, even for a second, get that not cool or, uh, you know, kind of feeling about um, homosexuals in society? What, why is this not? Why don't we just wake up and everyone say, "Oh yeah, yeah, he's it, big deal." Well, what, 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 what is stop, stopping that? It sounds like a crazy question, but you mentioned religion. I have three factors. But I want to hear you. You know, I, I I can be a front and forward here, 100%. right? That's that's um, what we do here. I think there's a lot of hate that's coming out of the White House, okay. and I believe that Trump is is showing people that it's okay. You can stand up. That we don't have to accept Indians. We don't have to accept Mexicans. We don't have to accept the LGBTQ community. And and he he can't be divided. farther from the truth. Yes, yes. You know. And I again, I'm so great grateful that I live here in the state of California. I consider myself a Californian. Yes, I am American, but I'm proud that I can say I'm, Cal I'm from California, and we don't have that here in our area. And it's just amazing to see Osh, who's an Indian American, being so bold and having this pride celebration for the first year, and, and you, you know, talking about these issues as a straight man. It, I think if you're amazing. a true man, if you're a real man, if you're a macho man, I mean, you're going to want to defend those who can't defend themselves, period. Yes. I don't care if you're uh, gay, if you have a disability, if there's something wrong. When you see someone else doing that, I was always that guy that I just I can't stand bullies, you know? And well, not just bullies, whether it's verbally, whether it's physically. Um, we've all had that run th through our heads, and either we can stay quiet, but I feel that staying quiet is just as bad, right? Yes. Of, as not doing anything. Um, at all, because some people would say, stay out of it, this and that. But so you were one of those jocks that stood up and fought for your I, I, I was, a, I was a, yeah, I was, I was a jock slash a computer nerd. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it, okay, okay. But no, I have, I have a lot of uh, gay friends. I told you about, you know, the cool experiences that I had in San Francisco State, actually getting to know these people. And we're talking males and females. The majority yes. of the female basketball team, many of them are probably listening 
uh, right now. I think we have one or two people that are straight on the roster. But here we are labeling them. They're humans. They're just freaking, they're people, right? But uh, what we have to do is, you know, when we take our time to get to know people, uh, you know, give them a full chance, we slowly realize that, hey, he's just like me. He puts pants on just like me. So even with religion, I want to say that, like, I'm a humanist first, right? Before um, anything, and we got to look out for our fellow man or woman um, in that way. So what I what I meant was in the household, right? So we. So one thing was politics. We talked about being uh, Catholic and that made it difficult. So why did Catholic make it difficult? Because you're told to be a certain way. Yeah, that's right? correct. Um, something else that's the top factors is religion, politics. But today, things are still going on now. I think Russia, kind of that area I was re reading up on, it's 2017. People are still being hung, right? In certain parts of Asia, differently. So, like you said, well, I'm just so happy to be in California. That makes you good. But, you know, they, what, what do you think really kind of makes it tougher at those places? The only thing I can bring it back to is education, which is why this is everything. Right? Right. Um, would you agree? I do. Education is a way out, and, and I saw that. And education is also a way for people to embrace differences. I mean, I... Change perception. Change perception, and I believe, and not to be disrespectful at all, you know, I think um, those that voted for Trump, you know, a lot of them aren't well-educated or or haven't experienced the diversity that we're so blessed to have here in right. California and Silicon Valley. Yep. Um, but education teaches us our history. And my dad was a history teacher. Right. So that was the 30 years. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to cut you off. I'm really bad at that. I was going to ask you. But that was here in San Jose? Uh, it was in Morgan Hill, actually. Wait till you check out my channel, one of my favorite history teachers. He was just a video that I put up today. Probably my favorite talk so far, which is why I was like literally hunting him down. He doesn't have a cell phone. But he was the biggest influence on me uh, to tell me to be different, think objectively. He was obsessed with like JFK and all those conspiracies. But it was important because that got my mind thinking that it's not all you know peaches and rain rainbows out there. Oh, no pun intended. But uh, the point is, the the world uh, can be can be rough. It can be mean, and it's gonna make you think why or why not. But you have to look within yourself know yourself and know that you're normal and, and there's know that people you're not alone. yeah exactly that that's you're the biggest alone. thing uh robert is and, and the thing is you have to know especially in 2017 you can reach out to people uh who are just like you surround yourself with those type of people and um you know and good people and great things will happen so this is what we do we talk and then all of a sudden it's going to be like an hour and everybody else is going to leave yeah uh, okay but um yeah uh, that was it as far as uh, that the last one was tough. I don't even like that question, but uh, I was going to say, well, if you can educate people with one fact, and I, I, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos of all these Trump supporters, and yes, the common trait is a low education level. It's easier to brainwash, manipulate someone, one that's that's prominent, but if you can educate, just choose one random fact. What, what would, to others, it's a tough question. Uh, what uh, what would you, what would you say uh, to someone who has no idea? That's this is why I didn't like this. Question. <laughs> okay. um, you know, I, I grew up, I didn't have any role models, and, and during that time in the 70s, uh, um, 60s and 70s, um, yes. <laughs> uh, there weren't role models, and now you look at today, and there's many role models, there's many, many um, uh, married LGBT right, so under, um, yep. um, couples out there who have been married for many years, um, there's many Latinos, Blacks, and uh, yeah, Indians, you know, um, Asian Americans who are out and proud and, right. and don't be afraid. Yep. And uh, I think one thing you kind of thought you want to say is it's nice to find a mentor, right? It's great to find a mentor and when right. you can do that. And that mentor can be straight, they can be gay, they could be yellow, they could be white, it doesn't matter. Yep. And uh, uh, Rob was an honoree from Ash today. I would recommend whether you know you're guy or girl, you can go on Ash's Facebook and see who the honorees are. And if you're ever going through anything, I'm sure they wouldn't mind being the type of people they are to reach out to them if they're going through something. Because guess what? You can probably relate 20 times more. And it'll probably make him smile that I remember when I was at this point. And I feel that the biggest leapfrog of experience, most valuable experience is when you can find someone that has literally um, walked the road longer. You can't put a value on experience. See, there's good things from being 
uh, quote unquote old Rob. Don't be so hard on yourself. Oh, well, not too old. I mean, I might be 48, <laughs> but I don't look, look hey, you're good. Man. You look good. You look young. Um, but say your last name one more time. Robledo. Rob Robledo. Thank you so much, sir, for joining me. I'm grateful. And thank I'm, you, I'm, I'm going to send you all this information, but thank you, Rob, for joining me. Um, and uh, we'll have this up for you guys. And we know you'll uh, appreciate it. Well, thank you very thank much. much man. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. What a, uh, actually, I want to. Uh, my roots are here. My, uh, my mother went to Mount Pleasant. My father went to James Lick. Um, you know, I, I'm born uh, and raised almost here. I grew up actually in back of Belfort High School. Okay. But after high school, I came back. Yes, um, I've been a police officer in, in wow. San Jose for 16 years. Oh, no, for me for that. <laughs> my best friend's a police officer. 16 and a half years of that. Uh, a couple years at Santa Clara before that. So 18 years of law enforcement. Santa Clara meaning Santa Clara County Sheriff? No, the city of Santa Clara. Oh, city of Santa Clara. Okay. Uh, did that and, then, and, and got hired at, when I was 20 and a half years old. Okay. Uh, with Santa Clara Police Department. Went to the police Department. Academy, that whole thing and uh, so forth. Not so after, not so long after that I came to San Jose and that's where I've been ever since. Wonderful, wonderful. And so now you have to ask why the Public Service uh, Award uh, being a uh, police officer explains itself. You have to be one, but to be able to be patient, be um, selfless, deal with people patiently. I mean, that probably, man, what insight can you give with that? I had someone uh, talking about meditation, and that's become huge now in Canadian police uh, forces. I think it's great for them but because the whole thing I'm sure by teachers is just patience, right? Knowing all people here. It's, it's very, very interesting. Look at me talking about yeah. no credentials here. But tell me about that. How was that? 16 and a half years. 16 and a half years, you know, always learning stuff. I got into a police union. Uh, okay. About eight years ago is where I got to know Osh. Um, Osh was a uh, major fighter for sort of what's right and just, and it was a huge supporter of the police department. Right. Um, and, and he's been he's been awesome. So we've become very close over the years. So Chief um, Eddie Garcia is doing a great job. Uh, Eddie Garcia is 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 pioneering. Uh, a lot of different areas. Right. I'm one of two openly gay yeah. police officers okay. in the police department. A police as an industry has not been uh, a place where males in particular have been very open about their sexuality. We'll get into that in the military. Um, as well as the military. But uh, let's get closer to you. People, people like Osh and, and, our, and our Chief Eddie Garcia yes. are, are doing a, a lot uh, to change that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's tough. I mean, talk about being surrounded by alphas, but you kind of break the, the mold where. Um, yeah, there, there's nothing wrong. As long as you fulfill the requirements, do what you have to do. It has nothing to do with your identity and gender. Why do you think that's such a controversy in uh, the military these days? Uh, what, was it Clinton that had the don't ask, don't, don't tell? tell. Yeah. Um, that's a, a tough, loaded question. Aside from ignorance and lack of education, why, why, why would you, from your experience, why do you think that we, we see a lot um, that, um, first of all, when you do patrol and yeah. stop someone, um, you know, at, I'm sure you've gone through things where people are going to feel that, okay, is he inferior or not going to have my back as well? Uh, right? Which is completely, I'm sure, that's to you and say, hey man, don't worry about that, right? right. It has nothing to do with what I can do mm -hmm. as a person. Did you, what was that like for you? Uh, did you feel you had to prove yourself more than others? Uh, you know, I think when you're uh, in the closet, you feel a lot of pressure to prove yourself. You feel like if you do something wrong, uh, it's going to be reflected upon who you are personally outside of work. Um, so we have a lot of work to do. The military police have sort of trailed a lot of the rest of society uh, in some ways. In other ways, police departments have been ahead of the curve where we've had protections uh, employment-wise for LGBT officers. Through unions? We, through unions. We've had um, you know, training uh, for domestic violence situations and have respected those relationships far beyond that. You know, ahead of where society has given them legal protections you know, officially. And so by that, you mean LGBT domestic violence situations? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I was reading uh, uh, on that as well. But, and talk about, it's hard enough wearing those bulletproof vests. Talk about weight on your chest. That's 10 times more. It's, it's, uh, a, it's a double weight on your chest. Uh, but, but yesterday, you know, we, we broke new ground. It's, it's an interesting time where. So this is about, this is exactly what you're For the first time ever, yet, you know, 24 hours ago. Um, the San Jose Police Department launched a recruiting campaign where they showed heterosexual couples, a police officer and the, and the actual police officer's spouse, uh, you know, male and female, and then they showed a female officer and spouse and a male officer 
and my spouse, and one of them was myself. Um, uh, my husband. Uh, Good looking dude, man. Uh, <laughs> recently married. But oh, congratulations. Thank you. How long? You? Uh, and just in June. So okay. I'll, I'll well, I saw in August. We'll vent to each other about it. <laughs> but, I mean, it might be surprising. There's never been, in the history of America, as far as we can find, ever uh, a police department who has shown police officers' families who are of same sex. We've done that with heterosexual couples forever, right? Recruiting campaigns always show the police officers' family. We want your family to be part of our family's family. So yesterday, our police chief said, we want everyone's family. Yes. To be part of our police family, Love and that you. was a new Thank thing. It was exciting, exciting. And it could change my life. Let's make sure I make that decision on whether or not to do it, uh, to join the academy, go through all those processes. They're going to feel that okay. Well, I'm welcome here. Yeah. Well, they might have changed their mind and say, "Are you crazy?" The last thing they're going to do is accept me, right? And everyone deserves something. Like that. People, people who are not of uh, ethnicity uh, or a class of people who has never achieved or has never been shown in a certain role, sometimes will downplay. It. But you, you, you can't underestimate the significance of having somebody in a role that looks like you as a young person. If you if you want to be, a, you know, the president of the United States, if you want to be a police officer, if you want to be anything, and there are no people like you in that role, that's going to impact your choice of what you want to do with your life. That's why I feel that this is the key. Because even uh, as a stream man, I feel that when it comes to anything like this, it's educate, 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 be transparent about it, yeah. talk about it. And some people don't want to, it's brushed under the rug. And that's what causes all these things. You need to be open, fair, and honest, especially for our youth, for them to know that um, this is completely normal. So, first question, open, open ended, kind of a, a toughie, but you, you've already answered it in a form of we got Pride coming up on Saturday, which is the point of this. Everybody, be sure to come out. Um, everyone, of course, is welcome, but show your support. You know, it's, it's so important. I just want to personally, what does pride mean to you? Um, obviously, you got answered that in many ways as a police officer, but the event uh, itself. Pride has evolved, obviously, right? It, pride started uh, as something very different. It started as a protest against, uh, you know, uh, people, know uh, people oppressing, right? Yeah. The, the, the Pride Festival started in New York with the Stonewall Riots, where the police, ironically, uh, you know, went in and abused gay people. Uh, in, in gay bars. And that protest has turned into a celebration. And today, in, in, in the modern society, Pride is a, way, is a place where LGBT people come out in mass with their friends, their family, their allies. And it's a, it's a place to, to show support uh, for that community, not just of that community, but it's really a place for everybody. And Pride celebrations today are attended actually more by people who are straight yes. than, than by people who are LGBT. Right. And that's the whole point. Yes. It's that we are part of society. We are have all family one. just like you and we're yes. all one. And so that's what it is today. And today it's a celebration. We're not uh, to the place where we'd like to be where we still have work to do obviously. Yes. There's, yes. there's things about that's, that's a great point. I went the last three years and obviously we're, we're so close to San Francisco we're not as big as San Francisco but I guarantee that on Saturday it's going to be bigger and bigger until we get there because we have to start somewhere, right? And the best way is to drop the knowledge that you just dropped uh, that was awesome about New York. Because it gets people, to, it gives them a sense of appreciation for another reason to actually come out. You know, they, they might have their misconceptions that it's just people, uh, you know, choosing to be to be open and this and that, but it's much more, much more of a big, bigger picture um, than that. And that was, I wasn't expecting, that was a very uh, cool answer. So it's so awesome. awesome. Let's yeah. see, see uh, my next one, I got some, some cool ones um, for you. So for anybody, obviously you said that for a long time, those 16 and a half years, uh, this one is a bit of a personal question. Uh, obviously you did not uh, come out at that time because I'm sure in your mind it's like, it's just so much easier if I don't say anything, right? Yeah. It's not going to uh, cause anything, but like you said, it was that way on your chest. For any kid who's out there watching right now, I know being Indian, being Asian, it's even twice as hard because of the context of culture and dealing with your family. Um, looking back, knowing what you know now, right? There's maybe one piece of advice or some type of piece of advice you would give uh, to anyone, I mean, male or female, um, kind of feels like they got three bulletproof vests on right now, you know? Uh, that's, a, that's kind of a tough one. <laughs> so, uh, you know, 
you have to be honest about the situation. In professions like the military or the police, it's not the same as it is at Google, for instance. But, but even close. But uh, the, the more of us that, that enter these careers, the easier it is going to be for the person behind you. And, and in many places, like San Jose, you have a support system. You have uh, a city government, you have a community, you have a police chief who supports uh, your family, your status. And, so and if you didn't know that, you know that now. And the more people, the more people who want to get involved, who want to be part, serve their community in these sort of roles that don't have as much openly uh, gay, lesbian, transgender, uh, bi, queer uh, people in that. We, you know, we need. We're hiring. Uh, we'd love. We'd love for you to come out. Uh, and and then everybody in our community would as well. And uh, why do you think that this is? Uh, why? All of a sudden, that we don't just wake up and there is no society for anybody to make you feel like you're weird or you're different. What would you attribute that to? I mean, it could be religion, it could be your environment. Um, what do you think would actually make people think that that's not, aside from ignorance, that, that that's not normal, that's not cool? Do you, because obviously, in places like Russia in 2017, there's still things going on like this. So, uh, again, I'm only, I'm only not giving one of the four questions, but I thought about them. Right? <laughs> uh, what do you feel this is in society? Uh, we are in the normal flow of progress, right? Martin Luther King had it right, right? The arc is long, but it are, you know, right? It, it, it's curved towards 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 we, we are in a place right now where we feel like we're taking steps backwards, right? right. But but at the same time, we're taking steps forward, right? We we had a, a very different president. Uh, a year ago, yet no police chief in America would show same-sex police conflicts. Today, we have a president who's rolling back protections, and we have police chiefs who are pushing the envelope forward, who are exposing what real police families look like. They're the same as our police families. So you take you know one step back and two steps forward. The point is you're you're moving forward, right? And it feels doesn't feel like that maybe to a lot of people right now, but I can tell you we are still moving forward regardless of what's going on. Right now. And it starts and you nailed it because it starts in the community. It's that their own epicenters and literally one person, right? Uh, yep. Excuse me to my next question, like a gentleman like Harvey Mel. There's probably many other Harvey Melts out there that never got the credit of that, but I felt it was important to bring that up. And how, how do you think that helped out the police force to know that they're accepted and okay in San Francisco, right? So my next question I was going to ask you was, you know, what does Harvey Mel mean to you? Obviously, Harvey Mel, JFK, MLK, it doesn't matter. Uh, you're uh, a leader in my heart and somebody I look up to when you stand open and talk about these type of things. Defend those who can't defend themselves, which is basically the key key of being a police officer like um, yourself. What, what do you think someone like Cardi Melbourne is to, to the community of LGBT? It's a uh, kind of silly question. <laughs> so, so here's the thing, uh, you know, uh, a different culture, uh, a different status than, than your own, your own. any uh, resistance to that is generally based in unfamiliarity. It, it's not knowing anybody uh, who's, who's not... You fear like what you, you don't know. Absolutely. Yeah. So people like Harvey Melk, who uh, gained the exposure to gain from, to give familiarity to a situation uh, that is unfamiliar to people, you know, is huge. and that's really what it's about. When you have people who uh, do negative things, act negatively towards uh, a class of people, those are generally people who don't know anybody like that. Right. And once they do, it changes their mind. And so that's why for LGBT people, being able to be out in your environment is very important. Because that means that the people around you, everybody who you buy groceries for, exactly who you work with. Exactly what I said to Rob, yeah. yeah. Because slowly with that, you learn that puts on pants just like I do, bleeds just so. like I do. The same thing with only they, they had to get rid of segregation and until they force these kids, I don't care if they fight, they got to go to high school together. Once they start going to high school together, realizing that they're not different, right? Other people like their environment, their home, the media, has told them that, right? It was different. They kept that fear, but with time, and that's another reason why it's so important to come out because they know that I'm not just talking to Bob, I'm talking to Bob the gay man, and guess what, he's still Bob. There's no there's no difference, so no, no, uh, really uh, well said, um, well said on you know, that part. Um, uh, let's see, besides that, that's the thing, it's awesome, very awesome talking to you as well. My whole thing is uh, 
uh, I know that you and I could talk for days, but so we make sure that our hour doesn't uh, go go by. Um, that, that, I think that would be my last question. Was important is if there was one last thing or anything you could say to educate uh, others, which is one the one question I think that to tell the toughest. What exactly would that be? I, I made a note that through history, you know, I was looking back to Alexander the Great, 10th millennium BC. These are all times where it's shown and documented within history that there's always been there's always been gaping from stone carvings and so forth, that it's nothing that is not normal. Like for some reason, we assume that our brains led me to that uh, other question that we, we just knocked out. Uh, Police officer, in other words, you smashed it. What was one last thing that you might um, say to anybody who has zero knowledge or to uh, educate someone or ask them uh, to go out and do? Uh, what I would say is uh, if you think you're unfamiliar with, with uh, the LGBT community, you're actually not. There are people in your life right now that are because they're, they're everywhere and they always have them. And if you look for history, we're constantly learning about somebody after they're dead, yes. you know, for many years, well, so, who was there? And so what I would just say is just be cautious of your surroundings and just realize that when you're going through life, uh, you already know people who are not like you. You just may not know it yet. And so the more you discover that, I think the more enriched your life is going to be. And then certainly uh, the more accepting you are of that, the more you're going to uh, I think the little things, doing the little things, and making them feel comfortable, right? Making them feel open so they can talk to you about that. Just to be a good human, right? We're humanists before um, anything. Um, so I think that's the most important thing. And that was the reason I wanted to do this. Um, was it just to educate, educate, give value, talk about these things openly. And if it can change one little uh, person, it was more than worth it. So I appreciate you letting me. Uh, your, your guard now being so open on such a last minute whim to me and uh, I, before I did all my research about you I was like you know what I'm going to go into a completely ignorant because just like everyone else is going to learn I'm going to learn in the process so my, ple my pleasure sir thank, thank you, you so much, you very much. Um, but again Saturday uh, check it out everybody is welcome uh, you've heard what you've heard from Mr. Gonzalez and another East Side guy like myself come out to Pride come out to Pride come out to Pride guys uh, and thank you guys all for, for watching. Everyone's rolling out of here, so I think I'm going to end the Instagram live here, but I'm going to edit this and, uh, and have it up for you guys uh, to share to the world. So, Saturday, come out to Pride. Thank you again, sir. All right, thank you. Appreciate we'll see you everybody out there. Cheers, guys. Take care.